Well, welcome everyone. We are excited to have you guys here to join us for uh, the November on track session. Today, we're going to be talking all about technology and how to be productive and efficient uh, using what you got or maybe what you don't have yet. Uh, we're super pleased to have Kevin Peterson joining us from Peterson Technology Group. And also want to give a shout out today to the sponsors of the OnTrack program. Thank you to TDS, to Amplify Digital, and Monona Bank. We certainly appreciate their support of these chamber events as we continue to do them virtually and hopefully, and we'll be back in person for 2022. So just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we would ask you guys just to leave yourself on mute during uh, part of this. We'll have a huge uh, Q&A session at the end that you can take yourself off of mute. We'll have a great conversation. Love to have those cameras on to see your beautiful smiling faces out there. And I'll be monitoring chat for Kevin as we kind of progress through the, the session today. So please ask questions. It's also a great spot to just type those questions so you don't forget them so that we can get to them later. So uh, with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Kevin Peterson. He is the chief storyteller for Peterson Technology Group. PD PTG is the- <laughs> Say that fast. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> can't, is the premier managed IT company in Dane County, providing technology services to professional service organizations. Kevin is passionate about getting rid of technology distractions, inefficiencies, and time wasters. He loves to put systems and processes in place to make his and his clients' lives easier and more productive. So Kevin, I'd love to turn it over to you. Thanks, Kristen, and um, welcome, everyone. Glad to uh, see you. Kristen, Kristen and I were talking a little bit beforehand and just... Uh, we're liking some of the um, virtual events, but glad that uh, some some of the uh, um, Middleton Chamber events are uh, back in person. Um, as she was saying, there's nothing uh, there's nothing like an in person uh, uh, get moving Middleton, um, and so we're glad that uh, more of those are coming um, back. So, um, I've got three things I want you to get out of today. Um, I am not a death by PowerPoint person. I've got a you know a deck that I'm going to go through some things. Um, um, and but you know really um, there'll be some tips and tricks uh, to help you increase in productivity. Um, I'm going to go through towards the end of my uh, you know slide some tools that you can use, um, different software packages that may uh, help you and your company. Um, and really, my goal is to get rid of time wasters in my life and my clients' lives. And so I want you to gain more time. My guess is you realize that I can't give you an extra 30 minutes a day. Um, I don't have that type of power. If I did, I probably wouldn't be here today. I'd be somewhere else. And so, um, but there are ways that we can reduce time wasters and increase effectiveness um, um, or efficiencies. And so that's what I want to uh, share some thoughts on today. Um, as I was uh, kidding a little bit with Van, as um, you know, people were coming in, um, you know, I like to keep things light. Um, you know, I know running a business is serious. Um, we've been doing this. We're now in year 18. Um, I am unemployable. Um, and you know, if I wasn't running this company, I'd be running a different company. Um, so, but I fully believe that you have to enjoy what you do. And as weird as it sounds, I get up every morning and my staff do as well, knowing that we're making a difference, um, in what we do and the services we provide. Um, so a tiny bit about me, you know, there's a whole lot of, um, you know, divide. I, I'm not going to give you my opinions on, um, you know, because I have no healthcare expertise. Um, I will share some opinions and that's what they are. They're opinions and um, they're, they're worth exactly what you paid for them, which is nothing. Um, you know, I've got an odd sense of humor. Those of you that know me know that. Um, I like to kid that um, I can be, you know, well, maybe not condescending, but opinionated, arrogant, crotchety, and old geek. I do have three grandkids, a fourth on the way. Um, it's amazing what you can do to appear younger than you really are. Um, but, you know, as, as, as those of you that know me well, um, yeah, I like to kid around, but um, I can take it as well as dish it out. Um, and the closer, you know, you, you know someone, um, you know, the more you can kid with, um, with the realization that everything we're doing is very serious, but you still have to enjoy it. So again, there's a few problems I want to solve today or talk about. So I work with technology. So of course I like Dilbert. And so, you know, this is a classic cartoon that was coming around, you know, about a year and a half ago, um, as everyone was transitioning to WFH, working from home, 
uh, remote working. Um, yeah, you start being very productive. Yeah, you know, for me, I would take an hour or two and watch Monk, one of my favorite TV shows ever. Um, and, you know, there were some days that um, I did nothing except email, nothing productive, um, you know, be, just because, um, you know, the systems weren't in place. So this is one of the problems looking to solve. Another one is this. So um, I mentioned early on time wasters. I mentioned systems. Um, I'd love it for those of you who have your um, cell phones on, turn them off. Um, um, you know, what I'm going to be sharing is important. Um, I think you'll get value from it. If not, eh, just leave the meeting. Um, but, um, you know, turn off your email notifications. Um, you know, IT people are probably the worst at saying we are great multitaskers. When in reality, I have yet to find an engineer who can do things, two things at once as effectively as one thing at a time. Um, I've got a great friend who swears up and down that he, that, that he's a great multitasker. Um, and I've seen the quality of his work. It's not, there's more mistakes made. And so I'm going to talk through some of how to use technology to stop trying to multitask as well. So part of what I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with technology, but if you look at the uh, far right graphic, I, uh, chose or had PowerPoint uh, choose for me, you know, it's, it, it's thinking, you know, what, what can I do that's different? Um, put some systems into place. Why? Well, I want more time or I want more money. Um, that's the reason that we do what we do. That's the reason that we systematize. Um, we here um, like to practice lean methodologies as far as trying to, you know, squeeze out a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes of, of increased efficiencies. Um, which can, you know, add up to hours or days in the long term. So I, I like that little graphic as far as, you know, change, change something in Kevin's head first. And so one of the big things that's important is figuring out even before you get to what type of application or what's needed is what are your priorities? For me, it's not just scheduling in my, you know, I use Outlook a lot. It's not just scheduling my calendar. Um, it's not just reading emails. And it's not just creating a long to-do list and then checking everything off. My default nature is when I check things off that, that checklist, I think I did a lot. So if I checked off 10 things, even if each one only took one minute and then 10 or 15 minutes later, I'm done. Well, that may not have been something I should have been prioritizing it or what's called a rock. So um, we've probably all heard the analogy. If you have you know, a, a jar and you're trying to fill it. So if that jar is your day or your week of what you can do and you have some rocks, if you have three rocks, if you have some pebbles, you have some sand, and then you have some water. If you put the water in first, and then the sand, and then the pebbles, and finally try to get the three rocks in, you can't do it. There's not enough space. But if you start prioritizing by putting in the rocks, they're harder, they're bigger. So you put those in first, they have to push them through the hole. Once you get those in, you put the pebbles in. They'll, see, they'll seep in a little bit, then you dump the sand in. That'll seep in through the holes. And at the end, you fill it with what's water, the water. You can get a whole lot more in, even though it may be a little bit harder to start that way, by prioritizing first. So, so really, my first recommendation is figure out what are your priorities. Um, you know, uh, I use something called EOS. And, and with my business coach, we talk about rocks as far as my quarterly, you know, big, big hairy goals for, for the quarter. Those should be the first things put on my calendar when I plan my week, either Friday afternoon or Sunday night. Um, from that, for me, I use Microsoft Office. So I use the calendar in Microsoft Office um, and I've got, um, you know, everything is scheduled. So um, if it's, you know, I'm working on business expansion, like the uh, hours it took to uh, create this presentation, I had to book that time in my calendar. Um, if it's a sales meeting I have at um, uh, one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, that's booked as well as the time that I need to prepare the statement of work. So that's about an hour of prep that I'll be doing this afternoon. So the, the big things are done first. And I like to schedule that productivity time. By doing that, I can then schedule the less important may not be the right word, but maybe not critical items going through email. Um, for me, I've got, you know, um, you know, the squirrel disease, you know, um, you know, a big shiny object, I'm attracted to it. Um, you know, I'm attracted to the little blue light on my cell phone. 
Um, we all are. It, it mentally you know, changes something where we need to go and take a look at that notification and get that fixed. So what I want to talk about next is what to do about that. So you've planned your week and you've got stuff scheduled. Well, what do you need to do? Turn off your notifications. I learned the lesson, it was probably two and a half or so years ago um, when I first, I'd heard this and I pretended. Uh, but about two or two and a half years ago, I actually tried um, this. I, I learned it from a gentleman, Darren Hardy. Um, and I started putting planning blocks on my calendar. So I'd pick one to three, one and a half to two hour blocks a day, depending on you know, other appointments. And that's where I would do the most important work. And what I found out is I would turn off my cell phone notifications. I turn off my Teams chat. I would not check, you know, LinkedIn. Um, you know, I would turn off my email and I would just get work done for an hour and a half to two hours. And the first breakthrough I had, there was a task that I had been working on or project I've been working on. I had actually rolled over the rock from a, from two prior quarters because I couldn't get it done in two or maybe it was three, two hour blocks. I'd finished it. So in under six hours, because I turned off all notifications, I turned on some old 80s hair band music, because that's when I grew up, um, and closed my door and just got stuff done. And because I wasn't constantly looking for the next buzz, I was able to get a whole lot more done in six hours than I had gotten done in half a year. So shut the door. Um, another key thing, Uninstall your applications. This is going to be hard for some of you, and maybe not all of you are going to do it. I used to be a news junkie. I had um, a lot of different news apps on my phone, um, LinkedIn, uh, multiple other um, apps, a um, bunch of games. I, I love playing Euchre, Hearts, and things like that. So I, I, so I had some games as well on my phone. And all frequently throughout the day, it was hours when I actually timed it of my day were spent looking at my phone for a text message, an email, um, you know, uh, oh, I've got, you know, two minutes, I'm just gonna check this news site. Well, 15 minutes later of reading all the, um, you know, news topics I'm concerned with and, uh, um, you know, more time wasted. So one of my challenges, if you're like what I was a couple of years ago is uninstall at least one of your social media apps or one of your news apps or something else that you would classify as time wasted. I don't know what's wasting your time. I could tell you what was wasting mine. I've removed every app from my phone, except what's needed from business. You know, so I have my email, my Teams, which is used for collaboration as well as calls. And I've got um, um, one card app that I, that I do play for a break here and there. You gotta have some fun. And that's sort of the last thing, scheduling breaks and fun. So, so you can't overbook your calendar. I also learned you have to schedule breaks. So, um, I have in my calendar the, the ability for either clients or prospects or, or partners to schedule my, my calendar for me. I intentionally schedule typically half hour after each meeting. It's just to, you know, in case the meeting goes over, um, in case I just need time to decompress, if I need to answer any urgent, you know, voicemails, you know, at least scan through my email, maybe answer a few of them. Um, and that gives me the time to finish that you know, put it away, you know, you know, schedule any to do's and be done with it and then move on to my next priority or my next meeting. And so schedule that time, schedule the social media, if Facebook, if, if you know, um, Twitter, you know, um, LinkedIn, whatever, if those are important and you either need or want to spend that time, do it, but don't do it all the time and don't do it from your cell phone necessarily all the time looking for those constant updates. Um, schedule when you're going to do it. You can log into them on a web browser. Um, you can set a timer if you want. I'm going to take a 15 minute break and I'm going to you know, go to whatever websites and, and read whatever news I want. But schedule it. The, the productivity you'll find um, by just uninstalling a couple of your apps and just changing some of how you do things, it will be amazing what you'll um, start getting out of. Now, I do run a technology company. <laughs> so I, I also promised Kristen I'd actually talk about technology. Um, so far, I haven't talked about it beyond getting rid of technology. Um, well, there are some things that you can do to enable increased efficiency. Now, some of these are not gonna apply to everyone. 
Um, and there's others as well. So I'm going to go through some of these and, and we'll talk about some others as well. Um, so it really depends on what makes you or your staff, for those of you that run businesses, most effective. Um, you need a comfort, you know, of your work and environment. Uh, for me, my office environment is set up exactly the same at home. So I've spent the extra money. I have two monitors right here. So I'm actually presenting here on my right monitor and I'm looking at the left monitor here. I get a whole lot more done whether I'm presenting, whether I'm working on a proposal, whether I'm doing some scheduling items by having two screens. When I'm just on my laptop having one screen, I am a lot less productive. So that's what's needed for me. And they are big screens that cost a little bit more money, but these days monitors, you can, you can get pretty cheap unless you're talking some of the big gaming ones. I also have a standing desk. Why? It's actually one that goes up and down. Um, when I stand, and this is me personally, I have more focus. So whenever I'm in a meeting or whenever I'm giving a presentation, I am almost always standing because I can focus on the one topic at hand instead of I'm going to multitask. I'm, I, really, I'm listening to you, Eric, as you're talking to me, but I'm actually really typing email and I'm not paying attention to you the way I should be. Um, this may be a no brainer, but external mouse, keyboard, speakers. Um, for me, I use a good set of noise canceling headset. That way, when I'm working or whether, as I said, I'm jamming to my um, 80s uh, hairband music, um, I don't hear anything else. I don't hear fire trucks. I don't hear ambulances. I don't hear st you know, um, staff um, or from working from home. I don't hear my wife or um, my, my last child still at home. I don't hear any of that. I can focus. Um, and then when I'm talking to someone, I can also have that, um, you know, better conversation on that. So external devices, what, what helps you? Um, I actually want to skip to the last one, whiteboards. There are a lot of ways that if you have a tablet or on your screen, you can use a online whiteboard. I also find just having a giant whiteboard on my wall is so productive. Um, um, so we're actually about to litter our office with whiteboards. Why? It gets you away from the computer and your brain is thinking a little bit differently and you're just writing down or you're drawing for us. We may be designing um, or coming up with a project plan. It's very easy at that point to take a picture uh, or have someone trans, you know, um, you know, transcribe it um, or you know, put it into um, your, your document. But there's something different because you're using a different part of your brain than trying to do it on your computer. So that can be a, a, a good tip if you're stuck with something. Get away from the technology, step back, go on a walk while talking or, or brainstorming, or go you know, to a conference room with, with someone or a couple of people around a whiteboard. Um, I think I already talked about standing desks a lot of, you know, um, again, I'm not a doctor. I don't talk about the health benefits um, of it. It's just you know, a, a lot of people who spend a lot of days in front of computers are finding you know, the ones that go up and down, like we have here, um, increase, they say increase productivity. I don't know if it does or not, but it increases the enjoyment. Um, it gives people, you know, the control um, and it gives people the ability to make changes. And so that's what I like about them. All right, Kristen, I'm just gonna keep going if I don't hear questions from you. Um, I'm not monitoring chatter or Q and A. So here's, and, I get a lot of disagreement about this, and anyone who disagrees with me, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's my opinion. Multitasking, trying to do the same type of task, we can't do it as people. Um, yes, there are some people trained. If you're running a nuclear, you know, bomb shelter, you know, or, or you know, um, working, you know, for the for military, you know, um, you know, with a nuclear coach, there are some people who are trained um, who can efficiently multitask. There, that's a very small percentage of the population. Um, I, you know, this is not the time to go into statistics. Um, I'm just giving you my opinion, my history, and what I've seen as far as my productivity as well as my staff's productivity. Um, so a few things that can help with that. One, I've already mentioned, turn off your notifications, turn off your email and notifications. Um, I'm going to talk about an, a, um, an application in a little bit that um, allows you to pause your inbox. It allows you to schedule when you send emails, but turn off your notifications, get rid of your browser tab. So if you've spent your time and you're surfing Facebook or YouTube or whatever, when you're done, close that tab. That way, when you reopen up Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever, you're not going to see that tab and your brain won't think, hey, I'm going to go take five minutes and check LinkedIn and half hour later, you're, uh, you've wasted that time. So close your applications. When you're done with something, 
close it. Um, computers these days are fast enough, applications open like that. Um, so you don't need to have you know, 20 of them open. It'll perform a little bit faster if you don't, and you won't be you know, tempted to check. You can get you know, deep in depth um, work done. So again, I, I talked about an application. Um, there's one of my favorites is called Boomerang. I'm gonna show you a video um, um, of it. Um, they have versions available for Outlook, for Gmail, uh, for Apple iOS, for Android. Um, the video is uh, showing the Outlook one. Um, they're all the same. One of the benefits, there's two benefits that I get out of Boomerang. The first is I do something called inbox pause. I'm a big believer of getting my inbox down to zero messages by the end of the day, um, or just a few that I may look at that night at home potentially, or the next morning. Um, but my goal is to look at every email once. Most emails I could just either just, it's something I just need to know, someone who's giving me some information, or just need a quick reply. So you schedule your email time, 15 minutes, half hour, hour, whatever it is, you know, a few times a day, and I get through everything. The rest of the time, my inbox is on pause. So right now, if I opened up my email, you would see that my inbox is paused. So I'm not getting new messages that are coming in. So I'm not getting a ding. I'm not getting a notification that says, Kevin, you have a new message. You know, Go get that dopamine hit and take a look at it. I'm instead pausing it. And in two hours, which is my default, I will schedule and take a look at my email at that point. Um, Email is not for urgent items. My staff know how to get a hold of me. Um, you know, we have way of ways of emergency getting a hold of stuff. If there's a serious client issue I have to address, so there are always ways that people can get a hold of you. Um, and email and text and chats, they're typically not emergency. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to show you this video. This will talk through some of the um, um, functions of Boomerang. And at the end of this presentation, and Kristen will send out the slides, um, there is a link to, to Boomerang. So it's something that you can um, take a look at. But here's a little bit about what Boomerang can do for you. I run a design firm here in the Bay Area. We have a lot of clients, like Courtney, just right down the street. Hi, I'm Courtney. And Richard, all the way in London. West London, but OK. To stay in touch, we send a lot of emails back and forth, which can be a bit... Frustrating. That's because we're always sending messages at odd hours. So when I'm working late and emailing Courtney, she's already... And Richard, he's... So I started using Boomerang. With Boomerang, I can write an email now and schedule it to be sent at the perfect time. So instead of getting lost beneath a pile of other messages, my email lands right in their inbox when they're likely to see it. Sometimes clients still don't respond, and I don't know why. But that's all good, because with Boomerang, I can set a notification in case I don't get a response, which reminds me to follow up. Boomerang makes it really easy to schedule meetings too. Instead of going back and forth about what times would work best, I can suggest multiple times and allow recipients to confirm with one click right inside the email. That was easy. Yep, it really was. All done, like five emails early. Better communication for better results, no matter what you do. That's Boomerang. Try it out today. So that's my quick pitch or promo for, uh, again, it's called Boomerang. Um, you know, Boomerang for Outlook is what I use. Um, you know, he talked about a couple of features, including, you know, scheduling meetings over email instead of back and forth saying, what about this date? What about that date? Um, he also talked about scheduling emails uh, for, you know, those of you that uh, may work, um, you know, different shifts at times or sometimes are working late at night and you don't want, you know, your client or someone to know that you're working at 2 a.m., you schedule your meetings. Um, or sorry, you schedule your emails. And so um, if I'm working late at night, I schedule my emails, I just click a button and they go, they get delivered at 7.30 the next morning or right around that. And hey Kevin, so that, can you touch on the pricing of Boomerang? Is that is there a cost to it? Is it an individual purchase? Is it an enterprise? Great question, purchase? all three. So the, the basic options are actually free. So again, you'll have the link at the end of the slide. Um, I'll also, uh, I can put it in the chat, you know, when I'm done. 
Um, so there are three or four versions. Um, it goes from, again, individual, which is free for certain options. Um, they have some, you know, medium end, you know, uh, depending on what features you want. Um, and then they've got a higher end. I think the highest end is, I think, $20 a month, uh, if I remember correctly, um, which has a whole ton of features that most people don't need. Um, and so I don't know them off the top of my head. Uh, we, we are not a reseller. We just use the product. So, but I'll, 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 pull, I'll find a link um, and make sure that that gets added to the presentation. Any other questions on it, Kristen? I think that's it for right now. Perfect. All right. So that's one application. Now I'm also a realist, you know, technology is not going away and I'm glad because I'd be out of a job. And so I, um, it's needed. So um, I want to go through, and I'm going to go through rather quickly a few slides um, about Microsoft Teams and Microsoft SharePoint. Um, this is a lot of what my company does. We do a lot of you know Teams development, a lot of SharePoint development, you know a lot on the security side, but really it's on the functional side where we're creating portals or environments where our clients live in, um, you know, um, for all their business applications. Um, you know, for, you know, a lot of their needs that they can do instead of going to multiple places, they can go to one or two places to get pretty much everything they need from an information collaboration and communication. Um, so um, some of the benefits is the effectiveness. So we're seeing clients get minutes to hours back by putting all collaboration, including, you know, uh, phone calls into teams. So you can collaborate. Um, Teams is similar to Slack on the, on the communication collaboration perspective, but it also has advanced functionality. If you use Microsoft 365, it ties in, it sees your calendar. Um, you can actually email um, items to channels. You can collaborate with people outside of your organization or outside of your organization these days. Um, Teams is being used a lot um, uh, with service industries. It's starting to be used by construction and project management industries because you can have people in the field just upload, um, you know, pictures, documents, or whatever. Um, um, you know, fill out forms, and everything is done on site instead of having to come, um, you know, back to the office and put something paper. So. Teams works on any device, mobile, it's web-based, um, and there's also Windows and Mac applications. So really the goal with Teams and SharePoint is to keep your um, employees productive, whether they're a standard, you know, um, like me, an information worker, a frontline in a, you know, in a manufacturing facility, project manager, um, construction, um, and it's actually, you know, growing by leaps and bounds also now in the healthcare, the schools and government um, organizations as well. Um, it's really just Microsoft has finally understood and got a, you know, a service that helps increase productivity. Um, and here are the three main parts of Teams. It's, it's the meetings. Um, so we're on a Zoom call. We could, you know, we do a lot of Teams meetings instead. Um, it's a very similar experience to Zoom but it integrates with everything else. So it integrates with my calendar, it integrates with my phone calls. So if I call you, we use Teams for our, voice, for our voice system. We use it for our internal chat and collaboration. So I can chat with my staff or with vendors or partners over Teams instead of sending out multiple emails. And we can also add apps. If you have a CRM like HubSpot or um, other apps that are important, you can actually put them into Teams. I actually can start my Zoom meetings from within Teams. So it's really the hub for all things work related that we do and that a lot of clients are doing. Um, you know, chat and collaboration, again, it's similar to Slack. You're either chatting individually with, with someone or, or with a group um, of people. Um, and I mentioned you can do a lot of apps, um, you know, either built in apps um, or custom apps as well. Um, Again, I don't do death by PowerPoint. I'm not gonna read everything. You'll, you'll see this in the slide deck. Um, it's really the hub for teamwork and Microsoft's been working on this for a long time and they finally got it right a couple of years ago. And so it's finally saving people time and money um, by having a well-organized teams um, with channels, with chats um, um, for productivity. I already talked about communications, um, you know, um, um, and where it's available. The last thing I want to talk about is SharePoint. SharePoint is basically, you know, if you think for us, you know, older people, the old school intranet. 
So basically a website just for your, your internal employees, for your staff, um, and it's included with any Microsoft, with most Microsoft 365 licenses. Um, and what you get from SharePoint is the ability to create basically employee portals. Um, so you can have a hub site where you have a um, employee news, you may have calendars, you may have um, new employees start starting birthdays, you can have links to your Twitter feed to your YouTube, um, you know, Yammer uh, videos, things like that. So it's really a hub site to get all the information, you can put frequent documents or um, 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 you know, other links, whether it's QuickBooks Online or, or other websites that you go to frequently, you make those links. Um, it's a standard web page, but it's built out specifically for being an intranet or, intranet or landing page for, for your staff. Um, and it also gives the ability, which a lot of people last year started taking advantage of, is cloud file sharing. So um, it allows you to move away from traditional servers in the office um, you have your files securely, um, even if you're a compliant, um, set up in SharePoint in OneDrive. And so you're able to share internal to your organization. This is also how we share with our with clients or with vendors and, and partners. Um, it's secure and we control who has access to that information. And everything's mobile. So for those of you who uh, you know, live on these, you can do everything SharePoint, everything Teams from um, from your mobile device. So really, I'm going to, you know, skip back a little bit as far as what's the, 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 the key um, benefits to all. It's really this. It's the meetings and callings, the chat collaboration, apps and workflow. Um, more and more service as well as, you know, um, project type companies are seeing the benefits of having a centralized hub for teamwork. Um, and then, um, you know, the communication side as well. And then just that single pane, plane of, plane of gat, pane of glass, I think is what it's called, um, for employee um, intranet. Um, and so they're seeing that along with the ability to share folders and files. All right, I've talked long enough. Any, well, that's an angry question. Any questions or anyone want to stick their tongue out at me? Um, any, any, anything that, uh, that need, that um, is in Q&A? Kristen, or do we want to open it up for anyone? Uh, we'll do both. So you talked before about like uninstalling apps on your mobile yes. device. What about just turning off the push notifications or is that not enough? Um, it's a start in the right direction? It's a start. So it depends on your personality. Um, and so you have to know what's best for you. I. Yes, turning off notifications are a minimum in my mind or scheduling when, they're, w w when to turn them off. So definitely turn them off, turn the volume way down. Um, I tried that first. I found, all right, I'm not gonna get, you know, notifications from ESPN or from, you know, LinkedIn or whatever. I'm just gonna keep the app. I still found myself using it way too much. And so for my personality, I had to remove them. Right. But at a minimum, yeah, disable, I disable all notifications except for critical ones in Microsoft Teams. Um, and um, if anyone has my mobile number, um, I get that as well, because that could be family you know, emergency. But beyond that, I don't get notified for anything in life. Uh, and then just an, a question about the monitors too. I know you said you have dual monitors. I mean, my husband at work has three. Like, is there a point where like you would just have too many because one could just be Facebook and one could be your own? Like, yes. any thoughts there? Great question. Um, and so it, it really depends on your industry and what you're doing. I was just at one of our accounting clients yesterday and um, the managing partner had, we, we had just put in one of the, I, I say to, you know, thousand inches it's it's really only i think like you know 70 or you know 84 inches um wide it's the which one of the curved monitors you know double um he says he, he can be more productive because of that um and so it's really about what makes you productive and so trying those things out i would love to have three or four but to your point I would be less productive. For me, I do most of my work on my main monitor here and my second monitor is more where I go for reference. So I might have my email up for like a, a prior proposal that I had done um, or web page, but the actual active stuff for me is on my main monitor right in front of me. Um, 
I've seen for most people, unless you're having to monitor something, um, two is typically what we see. We, we do a lot of um, creative companies, you know, graphics design people, even for them, they actually, some of them are down to one now because they're working from home, but most of them just have two. Awesome. Uh, then we have a question in chat too. Is there a typical ramp up time for Teams or SharePoint transitioning from your existing process? Is it like weeks, months? It depends on the size of the organization. Um, for you, whoever you know, asked the question, if they want to put that in the chat, um, I, I can give a little more specifics. So the big thing is how you do it for the way we do it. So you can self-implement SharePoint. You can self-implement Teams. Um, you have a bigger learning curve then. When we do it, we have a process down. When we do it for a client, we go through... Um, we really don't talk to the tech people as much as to the business people because it's about the business units and the productivity and the documents and the sharing that they need. Um, and we deal with the technology piece of it, you know, towards the end. Um, we training is a big part. We make sure that we train all staff in advance um, and communicate about what's going on, why it's going on. Then we, you know, implement you know, SharePoint or Teams, um, and then the other one, you know, a little bit after that. Um, and then we do additional training. Um, it's all about that training and follow-up. Um, and if you're a company under, say, 25 to 30, um, the ramp-up can be done, you know, um, if they're information workers, where they're, they're used to some of the technology, three to five weeks um, to get fully comfortable with it. Larger organizations, typically it's done by department. Um, so we've done a couple of cities, where, you know, um, uh, one up north that um, it was months, actually closer to half a year project because of the size and scope of it. But a small organization, you can do it in a couple of months. Awesome. Uh, I don't have any other questions in chat, but if there's anyone that, that would like to take themselves off a of mute and ask, we would encourage and invite you to do that now. Did you take this picture just for this slideshow? I didn't, but thank you for asking that. So we recently sponsored an event um, with our coaching company and they brought in a photographer. So my, my last headshot um, was from about you know, 15 years ago. Um, and so, um, no, I just got these last week, actually. And so okay. I thought these were dumb when he had me doing things like this. But I, when I, I was finishing this last night and I said, all right, I'm going to try one of those. And so this is, uh, I figured, why not? It's worth it. You bet. All right, any questions from the group? All right, so a couple of links. I know that Kristen will be sending this out. I'll, I'll be getting her the PDF, but um, um, you know, there's my email, there's my phone number. You can call if you have any questions. Um, this is not a sales pitch, I'll, we'll, we'll assist. Um, if you wanna book some time um, to ask some of these, you know, to get a little bit deeper on how can your organization do SharePoint or Teams or other, um, you know, productivity and effectiveness, I, I can go a little bit deeper in some of what I talked about, you know, on, on the earlier, you know, um, slides and, and start the talk. Um, here's a link to Boomerang for Outlook. Um, if you're a Mac user um, um, uh, or not, or, or, you know, Android, um, there are links within there to get to the other versions. They have one for Gmail as well. So they, they do all the major ones. So you, you'll be able to get that, which also have the um, exact pricing. There's a link there which has the pricing, and it really depends on how big your company is. Um, and for us, not everyone uses it. I wish all of us did, um, but we let our you know staff decide on that. Well, Kevin, this was very helpful. Thank you. My pleasure. Perfect. Well, we'll hang on for a few more minutes here, but um, just to kind of wrap up. I uh, wanted to shout out a couple of upcoming chamber events for you guys. So next week, Tuesday, we have Networking Blitz. So that's the virtual one-on-one -on -one networking. Um, we I always refer to it as like speed dating, which is kind of weird because this is a prof <laughs> professional uh, way to do that. Uh, and then Wednesday next week, it's we're doing Can't We Just All Communicate? So that that's going to be a talk around how does background, environment, um, upbringing, culture, all of that play into how we communicate and, and then how do you use those, you know, your, your internal workings to be more effective in the way that you communicate. So I would encourage you guys to join us for those. Uh, thank you again to TDS, Amplify Digital, Monona Bank. Huge shout out to Kevin for joining us and putting the work into this. Thank you for being part of it. We appreciate that.
And then a thank you to all of you guys for joining. Um, we look forward to seeing you in, in the future. Lisa's got a goal of having 42 new members join this month. So uh, if you enjoyed today, we would encourage you to share the, the chamber with um, those that you know that may not be joining us yet. So thank you guys. Have a great day. We'll stick around if you've got more questions, though. Thanks, Carl.